Hi, my name is uh, Vladimir Smirnov. I work as a system administrator at uh, Booking.com. Uh, and uh, today I want uh, to tell you um, about our graphite stack, how we uh, store millions of metrics per second in our graphite infrastructure. <laughs> okay. um, so, uh, first of all, why uh, you might want to store your metrics for some longer periods of time? Uh, first of all, um, one of the reasons I can think about is uh, capacity planning. So uh, like when the end of the quarter, end of the year comes, uh, you might want to understand how your service grows, uh, what needs to be done, what to buy next quarter or so and so. And uh, in that case, you might want to um, have some historical graphs about how uh, the performance uh, affected by users and so on and so on. Um, another big reason uh, is uh, troubleshooting and postmortems. So you want to store, uh, to store your data to understand what's actually happened if something br uh, broken or doesn't work really well. And another reason uh, is to sometimes sometimes to visualize uh, the data of uh, your business or your service. So some uh, Business, level, business kind of metrics. And uh, those, I think, the biggest reasons, and of course, there are much more than this. Uh, so, and uh, at booking.com, we choose a graphite uh, several years ago, I think in 2011 or something like that. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, what is graphite? Uh, Graphite um, it's, it's all describes is that it can do three things really well. Kick us, chew bubble gum, and make it easy to store and graph your data. Uh, so basically, Graphite is a set of uh, components quite uh, quite tied together. It provides you an easy-to-use API, so you can send a metric uh, metrics using text protocol, which you can just run bash, uh, echo, blah blah blah, and cut, and uh, it's sent. Uh, you can query those data using HTTP API. Basically, you can get a JSON. So it's um, that's one of the reasons why Graphite uh, became popular and developers really like it be because of its simplicity. Um, and uh, of course, it's modular, um, so you can uh, replace or tune your components uh, in individually. And uh, uh, in case um, you need to replace something, you can easily do this. Uh, but when you try to um, store your performance data or monitoring data, uh, you'll come up with some really complex setup. Because of the high availability reasons, you might want to end up in, uh, using several data centers or availability zones. Uh, you'll have a set of front ends, a set of back ends, a set of storage servers, uh, and some metrics producer. So the scheme will be kind of complex, and most probably you'll end up with something that looks like this. Uh, but uh, there are several problems, at least for us, uh, there were several problems with the schema. So first of all, uh, carbon relay was uh, a single point of failure, so you need to have some sort of centralized one, or you need to modify your applications to do the failover by themselves. Um, it was also really hard to scale because um, at the point in 2011, the fight clustering was um, not working really well. Um, when you add uh, more servers, it became slower and slower, uh, and so on and so on. And uh, in case you have a server-wide failure or data center-wide failure, um, you'll end up uh, having servers with different set of the data. And it's up to you how to synchronize them. Uh, and sometimes it was kind of tricky. Uh, so, and we decided to fix all those problems uh, one by one uh, for ourselves. And um, we also, well, all stuff we do with the graphite is actually open source and available on GitHub, but links will come later. Uh, so first of all, we decided to um, deal with the single point of failure. We um, wrote a daemon called uh, Carbon C Relay, uh, which acted as a uh, load balancer, it understands the graphite line protocol. Uh, it can do the failovering, some load balancing. Later, we implemented uh, aggregation, uh, part of the carbon uh, stack also in carbon C relay. Um, it also can do some more advanced uh, hashing stuff, and so on and so on. We also decided to put, um, uh, to simplify our work workflow, we decided to put uh, carbon C relay as close as possible to the actual metric producer. So uh, all our servers have uh, Carbon Serially installed locally, and we just tell our developers to, like, if you want to send the data, just uh, here is the file with, um, 
just send it to localhost uh, this port number or use this Unix socket. Send it and we'll take care of how to reach uh, the storage, <coughs> even in case of failure. Uh, and also, um, then we set it up uh, centralized uh, carbon serial A boxes, uh, several per um, actually environment, uh, which handled actual load balancing, and uh, they also do the copy to the second data center and uh, all the replication stuff. Um, so, what is carbon serial A? Uh, it's a uh, not really simple daemon at this moment written in C. Uh, it's also very fast uh, because it can route uh, more than one million uh, points per second uh, using only two CPU cores. Um, and because for our cases, uh, carbon relay was scaling not really well and it was like two, more than 10 times faster, carbon relay was more than 10 times faster than carbon relay in our cases. Um, it also can do aggregations and in case of uh, some Network failures, it can buffer your data for some amount of time. Uh, you can limit this amount of time to prevent OOM to come and kill you, kill some of your de demons. But it sometimes helps. Uh, another problem uh, we decided to fix um, was um, the difference between the data. So the main problem uh, with the difference is that if you have some sort of uh, geo-based uh, load balancers and you have a failure in one data center, uh, your users in one region will see one set of the data, in the other region it will be a little bit different. And people don't really like it. <laughs> they come and bug you like, why my graph is broken? <laughs> so uh, we uh, created a, a set of demons uh, that try to heal the data um, and uh, pr uh, present the user the first full set of data. Uh, the daemon queries uh, all the storages uh, that contains this metrics in parallel uh, and then um, it gives users the first set of data when no, uh, no uh, nuns are present. So users will, uh, won't notice any of our problems and we ha will have more time to actually fix the storages. Um, uh, this actually required more than uh, just writing one daemon. Uh, we have a one daemon running on the front end which uh, do the querying stuff. Um, and uh, at first we were trying to use uh, Carbon Cache's uh, own cache, uh, querying it. Uh, but there was a, we also saw some performance problems uh, with this case. Um, and we decided to, at, at first we wrote a Carbon Server, uh, another small daemon that just reads the data from disk and uh, presents it to the carbon zipper. Um, later, um, this uh, approach got one problem. Uh, because it was a separate daemon, we got no access to the cache. So we got a small delay uh, in terms of uh, data. So for users, for most of, most of the users, it was not really a big problem. But when you start to do monitoring, you want to see your data as fast as possible. Uh, so um, in last December, we uh, wrote a module for uh, Go Carbon, uh, implementation of Carbon Cache in Go, uh, open source one. We wrote a module that uh, implemented the support of Carbon Server and allowed us to use the cache for the data. Um, so this stack is written in Go. Uh, it's also very fast uh, because when we were qu uh, querying the Carbon Cache's cache, um, we got um, something like 80 requests per second uh, per server and now we have um, in our benchmarks we saw values more than several thousand around thousand something requests per second uh, so another problem uh, we saw was a uh, metric distribution uh, so we set it up uh, uh, several small clusters of from four to eight or maybe ten servers each for different purposes and at some point, uh, when we started receiving a lot of metrics, we saw a really interesting pattern that uh, the most uh, busiest server receive around 20% more load than the least busiest one. Um, uh, we started to think about how to uh, fix this. Uh, and we found that the root cause was uh, that our metric names uh, was not playing well with the uh, carbon uh, consistent hashing algorithm. And uh, so we started to look, look uh, looking around for, to find some, something 
better than a carbon consistent hash. And we actually found an interesting white paper from uh, Google about uh, jump consistent hashing algorithm. We basically implemented it and it allowed us to get an even distribution, uh, almost even distribution. The difference was less than 1% in this case. Uh, I won't go into uh, deep details about the, how jump hash works. Uh, you can read the white paper, it will be, I think, much easier and much um, faster for you. Uh, so another thing we also tried to um, address was um, uh, monitoring, uh, monitoring related, related issues. Uh, so um, monitoring can generate a lot of render requests so you can, um, well people uh, tends to do some sort of heavy queries like I want to know about uh, all my servers and check well, something like CPU usage on the busiest server. And when they have uh, thousands of servers, it became a problem. Uh, because um, we got uh, several thousands front ends running Carbon Web, uh, Graphite Web, sorry. Um, and um, well, when, when we started doing monitoring, uh, we saw that uh, People do a lot of requests and Graphite Web uh, uses really a lot of CPU. We try to uh, fix it, uh, optimize it, uh, play with it, but uh, in the end we started also impl writing our own implementation of uh, Graphite Web in Go uh, called Carbon API. Um, and that allowed us to serve uh, like really a lot of requests. So one of the significant uh, uh, pros of uh, switching to Carbon API was that our average uh, response time on the same amount of the machines reduced from the um, around 15 seconds, uh, it was average, uh, to around uh, less than one second, basically. Uh, it also, because it was uh, much faster than Graphite Web for our cases, uh, it also allowed us to do more complex queries and we actually started to encourage uh, developers and other admins to do um, aggregations um, like afterwards, so send the raw data and try to do aggregations using the Graphite Web's math functions. Uh, because with the Graphite Web, uh, if you have thousands of metrics, it can take some time to actually even render them, even to fetch them. <laughs> uh, and also at some point, uh, um, we decided to um, uh, split, uh, split up our code base and uh, um, all the expression stuff, uh, all the graphite functions are also available as a library so you, uh, you can also try to implement your uh, graphite compatible API um, uh, without, um, so because other parts are quite tight uh, uh, coupled with uh, our zipper stack and requires the zipper but you can use the library to implement uh, your own storage mechanisms on top of it. Um, another thing we started to thinking about is how to actually replicate your data. Uh, so for example you have uh, eight machines you have uh, in one data center uh, and you want to have some sort of redundancy. Uh, you're starting sending metrics and you're looking to distribution and in case of repli uh, so increase of replication factor two, what will happen? That uh, your relay will calculate the hash exactly two times uh, and your metric will end up on two different boxes. Um, so, and, uh, but we decided to actually find out uh, maybe there is a better way to uh, distribute those metrics. Um, so another way for those eight machines is to just create uh, um, two clusters of four inside one data center and um, like forget about the replication factor, do replication factor one and just two copies like, on the same. We also try to um, play with uh, just doing the replication factor one to separate clusters and uh, uh, but having two different hashing algorithms in each of the cluster. Uh, so we were actually wondering what will be better in terms of like data safety, uh, probability to lose the data and so on and so on. Um, and we, cre uh, so we created a small uh, program just to simulate the failures, uh, like fed it up the list of metrics we've got 
um, simulated several failures and like, created some graphs. So, for example, um, this is actually the amount uh, amount of lost data in the worst case. So, um, if uh, like two uh, servers that contains actually some amount of the overlapping data will fail. Uh, if you use replication factor one, of course, you will lose 25% of the data. Uh, but if you use replication factor two, you will lose only 3% of the data. But uh, another graph is the probability uh, to lose data in case of server failure. And with replication factor two, if any two servers fails, you will lose something. So you will lose this 3% of data. And with replication factor one, the probability of losing two, two, two same servers is well around 14%. Uh, so in, key, um, in that time we got some uh, also problems with the hardware, you always have some problems with the hardware if you have some large scale setup. Um, and uh, that's why we actually switched to having replication factor one and two clusters per data center. Uh, <coughs> uh, so what we currently have is uh, uh, quite complex and big setup. We have. 32 front ends. We have several hundreds requests per second on the front ends, uh, and uh, because they are uh, kind of complex, uh, usually one request contains around from 10 to 1,000 metrics. Uh, that's why we have uh, around 40 individual requests uh, per second and peak. Um, we have uh, more than 100 terabytes of data, and because of this, we have uh, several hundreds of storage servers. Because, well, Graphite really likes SSD, and we <laughs> well, you can't do anything with this. Uh, so, and this is, these are kind of small, and that's why we um, have this many servers. And in our setup, uh, at this moment, we have more than uh, two and a half uh, million unique, me unique metrics uh, per second, and because of uh, replication factor four in total, so two copies per data center, two data centers, uh, there are 10 million metrics per second that's actually stored. Uh, and actually, this value is also growing really fast because half a year it was uh, less than two millions. <laughs> uh, so, and we also have a lot of plans. Uh, we actually curr uh, currently we're working uh, working on getting some sort of metada metadata based search for the graphite in graphite compatible way. So, having tags, uh, like, well, you want tags in the uh, in 2017. <laughs> also want to find some replacement for Whisper because, well, Whisper is a good balance in terms of uh, read and write performance, but uh, in terms of amount of, um, so it always use around 12 bytes per point to store your data. And uh, well, in 2017, we have a lot of uh, white papers about some compression algorithms, a lot of other systems that implement them, and we want to play with something that might allow us to like, reduce this to at least eight bytes or maybe even less. Um, we're also thinking, um, so one of the problems we still haven't solved is aggregators. Uh, we can't use aggregators to uh, uh, do monitoring stuff because they are not backed up, uh, they are not redundant, and that's kind of a big problem for us at this moment. Uh, and we're also thinking that maybe later in future we might want to replace the graphene line protocol between the components uh, with something more efficient because well it makes no sense uh, to convert the data uh, from text to binary then back to text again and then back to, back to binary to store them. <laughs> um, also, uh, as we are working on the carbon search at this moment, we already have some implementation which have. Um, uh, so, uh, some small limitations at this moment. So the syntax is kind of, uh, might look weird, it's also very t um, coupled with our zipper stack, uh, but um, at least we can do some, qu some simple queries like give me metrics received uh, for all the graphite storages, uh, where the status life for this particular data center. Um, but well, there are a lot of limitations. Like we don't, uh, we can't support uh, and syntax or like no uh, XOR or something like this. Uh, we also do not store the history of uh, changes at this moment. But, but we are thinking about how to implement this. And the stream of the tags for us is a separate thing. So 
we run a daemon where you can, can feed it with the tags using either Kafka or HTTP API or something else and uh, it will store them in memory and well at this moment this, uh, this is how it works but we are um, working on improving this. Uh, we also have some uh, interesting uh, tests in terms of backends. I got a really big list of uh, potential replacement for Whisper. I was trying at some point to uh, just count all the time series or databases that can be used as a time series. Uh, and I think there are more than 30 of them at this moment on, in open source. <laughs> uh, and uh, I decided to like get a top five of them, try to experiment with it. Uh, and at this moment I'm experimenting with a click house and I get something like 2.4 million uh, data points per second on a single node machine in terms of storage, which is really nice. But, uh, well, there are a lot of uh, different things to solve. I also tried to play with uh, InfluxDB, but uh, as we have a graphite compatible stack, uh, uh, we need to have a really fast graphite compatible receiver in terms of uh, on storage and uh, InfluxDB's receiver was not uh, playing well, so I postponed testing for quite some time until I have more time to do this. Uh, and because, well, for, for ClickHouse, I just found the open source project that already implemented something and what easy, it was easy to fix. Uh, yeah, and all our stack was, uh, so, is open source. We use only, op so, we trying to develop all our graphite related stuff initially as open source projects. Uh, they are stored on the GitHub accounts of the um, like developers who started uh, developing it, uh, and uh, then we are contributing. There are some projects that are like uh, open source developed by other companies. Some projects are, uh, like Zipper Stack is developed by us. Uh, so you can uh, actually go grab, play with it. Uh, sorry, there is no Docker, Docker files for it at this moment, no Docker images. Uh, but I hope uh, Go code is kind of easy to install. <laughs> yeah, so any questions? Thank you for your <laughs> presentation. Uh, have you ever evaluated uh, Cassandra as a backend for Graphite? Uh, yeah, we tried to use several. Uh, so I tried to experiment with several Cassandra-based uh, solutions. Uh, like I tried to play with, I think Kairos DB and with. Uh, uh, let me think. Uh, well, I don't remember the name. Uh, also, was something that was easy to set up. I think it was uh, Cyanide. I think. Uh, but uh, the one of the main Cassandra problems of at least uh, some Cassandra-based solutions is that, um, uh, well, write performance might be good, but uh, in terms of read performance, Cassandra sometimes does not behave really well. Uh, so, and because we have uh, like several, so we have 40,000 render requests per second uh, in total, it's uh, kind of important for us to also try to answer as fast as possible. We try to measure, for example, the delay of, uh, so how, how fast we can get the data back and we got, uh, at this point, we got something like several, several dozen milliseconds delay in terms of like, so of the whole pipeline. Uh, itself, and we're trying to keep it as low as possible uh, for monitoring reasons. Um, hi, thank you for the presentation. Very interesting. Um, I have two questions. Quick one. Uh, first of all, how many people are managing this environment? Okay. <laughs> okay. How you monitoring it? And how many servers are you using for this system? <laughs> yeah, sorry, this microphone on me doesn't work. Uh, so, <laughs> uh, so yeah, just, just repeat. Uh, we have right now the team of two people, and there is a developer who initially developed parts of the Zipper stack who sometimes help us. 
and there are some uh, hackathon projects in uh, booking.com uh, for example carbon search is uh, also part of hackathon project one of the teams decided that they really want to have tags and uh, search over the tags and like in two days they implemented this <laughs> and uh, well we are starting to use it in production now uh, so uh, but like managing day over day is to people <laughs> Um, so, in terms of uh, servers, uh, we have uh, 200 backends, 32 frontends, and something like 16 relays, but we are trying to keep, um, so the logic behind the amount of servers is we need four times, uh, so we need some, uh, to have some spare capacity, we need to have some, um, like in terms of relays, uh, we have three or four relays per environment, depends on how big environment is. Uh, and um, well, usually one relay can handle all the load of basically uh, everything. It can handle uh, all the load uh, of our graphite stack. But uh, we want to have a redundancy, so we are trying to keep the number at least three, uh, to at least three. Um, because well, for, for us, graphite is mostly uh, at this moment disk space, uh, yeah, tight. So uh, the problem is the disk space most of, uh, most of them. And uh, what was the Ah, monitoring. Uh, well, we have uh, <laughs> uh, monitoring graphite. Uh, we are monitoring graphite with the graphite, basically. <laughs> this is sometimes wrong, but uh, this is how uh, what we have at this moment. We are trying to separate. So, for monitoring our st uh, stack, we have a small cluster for only graphite-related metrics. And we are trying to like, do alerting based on uh, this. So we have a s separate infrastructure. And uh, yeah, so this basically counts. Two, two questions. The first is, could you please, dis please display the slide just before this one? For a moment. Yeah, thanks. And, um, and then I'll ask the other question. There's, the, you talked about replacing whisper there's been such a cacophony of proposed time series databases recently including influx and and a bunch of others can can you comment on why none of these none of these are what you want or sort of what your criteria are that makes you reject all of these proposals that are on the in the open source market of of late Uh, so if I'm heard correct, you are asking uh, so about uh, what our criteria is for like something that will be able to replace Whisper, right? Yeah, but in a simplified way. So uh, basically, uh, we want something that uh, will have a good balance in terms of read and write performance. Uh, right now, the Go Carbon is capable of writing something like 400k uh, data points per second on a single server node, or well, even more, but we, uh, that's, uh, as far as we go in our testing, we decided that's it's usually more than enough for us. Uh, otherwise, it will be, become again a uh, like problem of uh, disk space uh, for us. So uh, our main problem is um, that Whisper is uh, space inefficient. Uh, 12 bytes per point is uh, too much. And disks are kind of expensive and servers are also not very cheap. <laughs> Uh, so we want uh, to have something that have good read performance, good write performance, uh, and yeah, also because um, uh, we use Graphite really extensively, uh, we can't migrate uh, like in a single day from Graphite to something else. So we need to maintain a Graphite comp compatibility for kind of some time. Uh, and uh, we need to also have a good Graphite uh, to this database mm, compatibility layer. So, um, and as we, well, we are a team of only two people uh, at this moment. We don't have really much development resources uh, and so on. So we are trying, uh, so I'm first prioritizing uh, those databases which have already in open source something that works more or less uh, well for us. So, because, well, after that I can try to like implement a, a better layer for, for example, InfluxDB as, as a separate daemon or something like this. But it will take some time for me. Uh, At the beginning of your talk, you said that collecting all the metrics is good also for capacity planning. Well, in capacity planning, you don't look at for a week or a month, but pro you probably look for two years. Is that possible? 
and how, because you would read possibly all data. Um, so the question was that uh, how it's possible to do the capacity planning and if you store uh, like data for longer periods of time, right? Uh, yeah, well, uh, we actually ex really extensively use the retention periods, so we're trying to force the developers and people to uh, define some good retention schema to just decrease the precision of the data, do some aggregations, and so on and so on. Um, so there are several approaches to this. Some people like are okay with the default graphite stuff. Uh, some people uh, prefer to do this by themselves because they know their data and they know how to actually reduce it. And this actually helps a lot for this. Um, and also, yeah, we use a Grafana a lot actually to do, to display the data. And Grafana can also uh, like request from the graphite some specific amount of data data points. Also, Go Code um, helped us to. Uh, like migrating to Go helped us to display those stuff a little bit faster than usual. And well, for capacity planning, you don't need to actually, you can wait for a minute or two minutes even for like displaying your graph because you usually do not need it like every day, every five minutes, every hour. So, yeah. Hi. Um, so if I want to collaborate with you on this project, do you have any detailed upstream reference to how to set this up with all of these different uh, components? Um, well, uh, about how to set, it, uh, set this uh, setup up. Um, uh, yeah, there is no, uh, we have some plans maybe to implement a Docker image or something like this with reference setup, but again, this takes some time and uh, usually we have something more high priority than this. Uh, for most of uh, the demons, there is a readme file with the uh, example command line and uh, options. So there is no guide yet. Uh, we are thinking about implementing the proper guide about how to set, uh, set this up about some, with some examples and so on. But, well, there is only readme files at this moment. <laughs> Hello? Hello? Uh, so, if I understood well, the carbon, carbon C relay is the only component written in C. Do you have any plan for further development there? Going to go or something like that? Uh, it's easier to hear. Than here. Sorry. Uh, so, uh, yes, carbon C relay is the uh, only component uh, written in C uh, here. Um, well, it, it, it was actually the first, also the first component, I think the first component that was uh, written. Uh, we actually have some plans in uh, like trying to rewrite it in Go and maybe see if it will work at least in some cases. For example, replace the carbon C relay on the machines because Go code is easier, easier to, do, to uh, deploy, easier to debug. Uh, it's much easier to ensure that it's uh, actually stable and run. Um, so yeah, we, we have some plans into in this. How are you? Uh, how are you sending metrics to the relay? In particular, um, how are you encrypting the metrics on the wire and things like that? Um, so at this moment, we um, all our component. Uh, so in terms of uh, like sending metrics, they are uh, all talking using the graphite line protocol. Uh, we use our own data centers and the wire at this moment, so there is no encryption at this moment. And we, yeah, graphite line protocol mostly. But we are, again, we are thinking that it might be a good idea to replace it or at least add uh, optional encryption. So um, you said you had 200 machines with 
with, with the CDs, like, um, how do you manage recharging? So you must have been adding much more. So how do you, like, it's not as, like, add 10 machines. You need to recharge it, essentially. How do you deal with it? And it's, like, a corollary to this. Um, did you think about, like, actually moving from SSDs to HDDs, like, you know, for old data, you know, you, you won't need as fast, like, a year ago, you don't care. Um, thank you. Uh, yeah, so, um, uh, so how we do resharding? We, uh, at this moment, we are, uh, so for a longer period of time, we got a bunch of uh, scripts written in bash, like really hackish way that uh, basically do are syncing uh, are syncing the metrics to a new machine and do whisper field to actually fill the gaps. Uh, that was the old way. Now, uh, Alexi, uh, which is also the second person who is managing the graphite, uh, migrated uh, this thing to Bucket Tools because actually Buc uh, Bucket Tools have an implementation of uh, jump hashing, uh, consistent hashing algorithm, the same one we are using in Carbon Serial A. Uh, so that actually helps a little bit to uh, speed up all the things and do the distribution using the some like, better way. Uh, and about uh, storing the old data on HD HDDs or something like this, uh, yes, we are thinking about that that might be uh, one of the next steps in future, but first of all, we want to actually replace the whisper with something more efficient before doing this. Because well, with graphite, it's uh, a little bit trickier. You, you still need to store everything on the uh, disk, and for longer peri um, like longer term storages, you might want to reduce the data, and there is no easy way to um, do this on relays, for example, and forward the already retention data to uh, HDD-backed machines. Hi. Uh, how do you manage the renaming or deletion of uh, older metrics that are no longer used or just because the developers changed the naming convention or things like that? Uh, f well, it's, it's also a kind of hackish way to do this. Uh, again, uh, it's a set of uh, bash scripts uh, that basically ran the uh, carbon C relay in a test mode, uh, feed it with the data, see on which server this metric lands, and then actually goes over the SSH doing rem minus rf <laughs> metric name. <laughs> uh, that's the. Uh, for renaming, we are trying to uh, not to do this and like asking the developers to like take care of this. You have a uh, special cluster of two machines to like as a playground where you can play with your schemas, uh, do the stuff like that, and so on and so on. In exceptional cases, uh, we have some mechanisms to rename it, but we are trying not to use it in this moment. Talking about metrics and naming, how did you solve the fact that you have 130 terabyte uh, of data as live data? So how long is going to be? How, how long is the uh, time windows for one, 130? Is one month, one year, more or less? And also, how you ask the developer not to write strange naming? So did you create a nomenclature, like a documentation that the developer has to follow? How often they have to send metrics, or how you're limiting them? They, for example, not fill the entire disk with a stupid metrics in production before you notice it. Uh, so, um, uh, well, we have several retention schemas, depends on the like data developers want to send. Uh, we have some metrics that are per second ones. So uh, usually for per, sec per second, it's something like one second for uh, like day, uh, 60 seconds for two weeks or something like that. Um, then I think one hour for several months, like three months, and one day for like five years or like for basically for forever. <laughs> We're trying to do this forever, but well, uh, with Whisper you need to define the even the yeah. Uh, so um, and about how we uh, so. We are asking the developers trying, uh, trying not to do this. Sometimes they do. 
we have some alerting on like if the disk space is decreasing too fast, we are receiving uh, an alert. We are investigating what actually goes wrong, uh, who is trying to fill this. Because well, sometimes uh, this happens. For example, one of the common cases is the, uh, that developers are adding some MT5 of something to the metric name, which is always different. Or, for example, in Perl code, they usually use the, um, sometimes, uh, at some point they do, uh, uh, like, so they were sending instead of the name of the variable, uh, like the address of it in memory. <laughs> so for those kind of things, we have uh, rules that just filter them out, replacing with, uh, the name with, uh, your code is broken, please fix it, <laughs> in caps or something like this. Uh, yeah, but we, we have no trotting. We n do not asking our developers to like declare it in forward or something like this. That's it.